Please be seated. I want all those that are young at heart, especially the children, to come up at this time. Thank you. Come on, Jace. Tell me your name again. Anastasia. 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 Where do you go, Anastasia? Come on, David, George, come on. Come on, Jacob, Benjamin, Jenna. All right, let's see. Hmm. Y'all aren't dressed right. Why don't you have on a robe like this person? See all them? Why aren't you dressed like that? Huh? You got anything to say for yourself? Yeah, you need to look down. You're inappropriately dressed. Hey, I'm telling you that. I'm just kidding, of course. The, uh, you're okay. You can stay. The, uh, uh, there's an event coming up at the end of this month. And uh, what is it? It's a big event. What is it? Something we all look forward to. Halloween, right? Halloween. What are you doing Halloween? What are you doing Halloween, Anastasia? You get what? What do you do before you get candy? What? You dress up, don't you? You wear costumes, right? And you go to people's house and what do you say? Trick or treat, right? And and what happens? Then you get candy, right? That's good. Then what do you say? What do you say after that? Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Okay. There's a. Y'all ever wonder why we wear these robes? Notice that men wearing dresses. That doesn't make any sense, does it? This is called an alb, right? This is a cincture, and we wear these for reasons. This is the early. Roman dress when Jesus was alive. This is what they wore. So when the church started after Jesus went up to be with the Father, they began to wear these robes to remember the the events that happened, right? Now, we dress up on Halloween and we uh, go out and we knock on doors and, and we don't come up to the doors and we go, give me some candy, right? You don't do that, do you? What do you think you'd would happen if you did that? No. You think they'd slam the door on you? Yeah. <laughs> There's a story that Jesus tells in the Gospel of Matthew today. Gospels of good news about Jesus, right? And in this story, there's a, a feast. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like this feast that the king gave for his son's wedding. And he invited all these people and they didn't come. They had all sorts of reasons why they didn't come, I guess, but they didn't come. And then he sent his slaves out to them and he said, I got a feast for you. I've already prepared the food. It's all ready for you. Come on. And they not only didn't come, they beat up the slaves. And the king got mad and he killed them. That's not a nice story, is it? Is that a nice story? No, no. And then he goes out and invites all the other people. I mean, people like us, you know, just common people, people that do things and get in trouble and do uh more things and get in trouble, but he invited them all. He said, come on, come to the feast. And they came, and he found one person that wasn't dressed right, right? And he bound him up and threw him out into the darkness. Is that a nice story? Is that kind of like you want God to be towards you? No, we want God to love us, right, and accept us, even though we do some stupid things sometimes, right? And now, now here's the story. It's not really about clothes. It's about the kingdom of heaven, Our God loves us. God wants us to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. But sometimes we're stubborn. We want to do things our way, right? And and we don't have the right clothes on. And the clothes that he's talking about is, what do you say at the end when you get the candy? Thank you. Thank you. That's what God wants from us. Thank you. And coming to the party is a way of saying thank you. So to remember this sermon, I'm going to give you a jack-o'-lantern. Come on. You get a jack-o'-lantern, I'm going to give you a symbol of Halloween every Sunday until Halloween. And all those people that didn't come today, they don't get them a jack-o'-lantern, do they? All right, Jacob, you get two. Okay, see you, buddy. Okay, your brother get one too, doesn't he? Charles, thank you. Jenna, you're beautiful. There you go. 
Jace, thank you for helping me out. All right, Anastasia. George, you want to stamp? Yes, sir. Okay. And David, you want to stamp? You, there you go. Right. There you go. Halloween. Happy Halloween. <clears throat> Father, make us the masters of ourselves that we might become the servants of others. Take our minds and think with them. Take our lips and speak through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire through Christ our Lord. Amen. I usually don't t title my sermons. I don't have time for it, really. I mean, when you're preparing them at 7.30 for 8.30 service, you know. And, but I got a title for this sermon today, and I want you to write it down. Anybody got a pen? You may take a note. This is uh, Pig Roast Theology. Pig Roast Theology. Some of you know that we had a big pig roast last week, right? Was it fun? Absolutely. A few of you thought it was fun. Uh, did you get some good food? Okay, good. And the music was wonderful, wasn't it? Lots of entertainment for the kids, bouncy things. It was a great event, really exciting, right? And did you know that there was a lot of people that weren't there? Yeah, a lot of people that are part of our family. At the 8.30 service, I came in and I saw that it was a small gathering, although today there's a much smaller gathering, if I had anything to do with it, I'd go and get people. Maybe we could hire them. You think we could hire them to sit in the pews and fill them up? And fill all these pews up that are empty today. Well, last uh, Sunday at 8.30, I said to the group that was there, the small group, I said, hey, everybody, listen, uh, we got a lot of food out there and entertainment and everything, and I'm sure, surely we're not going to have enough people to eat it all because I've seen it, and we didn't. I said, go invite your friends, get your neighbors, come bring anybody, anybody that you want to, right? And I'm in it. I'm in it. But very few of them took advantage of that. I'm telling you what, I love a party. Some of y'all know that, right? You know I love a party. And if, if somebody invited me at a party and said, bring a few of my friends, in fact, bring 10 or 12, we, we need some more people to eat up all the food and drink all, I would go get them. And I'd make sure they knew, man, you've got to come to this party. I've done it before. I mean, I go to parties sometimes when I'm not invited. Because there's joy to be had at parties, right? A lot of joy, a lot of wonderful, good stuff. People act differently. I'm, and I've told you this many times that if you haven't heard this before, you'll hear it now and you can remember it. I wouldn't be in the church today if it wasn't for covered dish dinners. Because it was the only time that I remember going to church and feeling that the people were real. That they were genuine. That there was something going on that was important. That I was a part of. And I was invited to be a part of. And all these people were invited, but a lot of them didn't come, right? And some of them were away. Some of you were away, and I appreciate that. But some stayed at home, went home, and ate, you know, gruel, right? <laughs> and they could have had... They could, or they went to McDonald's and got a cheeseburger, which is kind of like gruel in a bun, right? <laughs> and they could have gone, come to the pig roast. They could have eaten wonderful food, right? It was good food, wasn't it, Bill? Right. Wonderful. The best. But they didn't for some reason, right? And I tell you this today because this story that we read today is about pig roast theology, which really is about abundance, Right? Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a, a king having a great feast for his son. His son is to be married. And if you don't know this, you should. The gospel and the New Testament writers tell us that the relationship between Jesus and his church is like a marriage. And who's the church? We're the church, right? And this marriage feast has been prepared for us from eternity. And we're invited. We're, we're invited to be a part of this. Jesus says the king had this great feast. And all these people invited, they didn't come. They had all sorts of reasons why they didn't come. Some were true. Most were phony baloney made up garbage. And so he sent out his slaves again. He said, look, I've got a pig that I've roasted. i got some chickens. i got some, what all did we have? Brisket. i got all sorts of vegetable dishes. Come, come to the party. And not only did they not come, they abused the messengers. You wouldn't do that, would you? 
No, never happened. So he said, well, I'll invite all those other people out there. He goes and kills all those people. Now, what are we going to do about that? I mean, this is the God Almighty, the one that we want to trust in and love and, and worship. And he's going out and killing all these people because they didn't come to his stinking party. That doesn't make any sense, does it? That doesn't jihad with our idea of what God is like. God is good and merciful. But yet he goes and he destroys all these, the king does. He goes and destroys all these people. Then he sends out for all those other people that, that didn't come. You know, people on the street, you know, the, the hardworking people, uh, ditch diggers, right? People that wait on tables and stuff like that. He sent them, and get them come, you come to the party, it's a feast prepared for you. And they showed up. And then the king notices this one that's not dressed right. Poor schmuck, he gets caught and the king takes him and has him bound and throws him out into outer darkness. What do we do about that? I mean, do we want to worship a God like that? Surely he's not talking about clothes here. Oftentimes there's a metaphors for clothes in the Bible. Paul tells about putting on, in Ephesians, putting on the, these different garments, right? What is it? The cloak of righteousness you know what it is scholars tell me what it is all these things that we're to put on so he's talking about something other than clothes here he's talking about an attitude an attitude some stayed away why did they stay away today's story is about a great feast first of all ask the question why did he throw a feast I mean, sure, he wanted to celebrate his son was getting married, but, but why this? Why is that story so important to us, right? Why did the king throw a great feast? Well, he wanted to celebrate. He wanted us to celebrate with him. And what are we celebrating about? We're celebrating about life, life that we've been given freely, generously, in abundance. Why would we stay away? Why did Matthew write this story? Why has Matthew always got somebody being punished, going to the pits of hell? You know, that, that doesn't seem right, does it? That doesn't even make the same point as some of the stuff Matthew writes about. Well, we have to look a little deeper. We have to think about Matthew. Who was he? Who was Matthew? Do you remember? He was a tax collector. They were the most despised people in that day, in that area, because they could put any amount on top of the tax that the Romans called for that they wanted to. And they often did. They often put more on than the, anybody could bear. And if they didn't pay, if the people didn't pay, they'd have them thrown in prison. Very unfair system. The tax collectors were despised by everybody. And Matthew was one of them. Perhaps Matthew couldn't have done anything else. Maybe, maybe he was out peddling pencils on the street and somebody said, hey, I get you a gig uh, as a tax collector. And so he did it because he couldn't make a living anywhere else. Maybe that's what happened to Matthew. He seems like a good guy to me. And he was out there doing what he could to make a living and he was despised. Do you think that his theology involved a little judgment? He was a pariah. He believed that he would be punished forever, but he had to do this. He was going to hell. Woo! Hell. We don't talk a lot about hell in the Episcopal Church, so you had to emphasize it when you use it. Hell. This is the same Matthew that Jesus picked up on the side of the road and said, Come, follow me. For no other reason that Jesus wanted him to follow him. Don't you think Jesus may have invited a few other tax collectors that said no? I bet he did. Matthew was swept up in this ministry of Jesus. He got to see miracles. Incredible things happened to him. He no longer had to be afraid of going to hell. He had been rescued from this horrible, pitiful life that he had. And he was looking for something better, and he wanted to share it with others. He wanted others to be a part of it. He knew his brothers, his fellow disciples often argued about who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And they were always using the same words of the law, how it benefited them, but they would forget about the times that they missed the mark. 
And Matthew was trying to tell him, no, it isn't about your righteousness by the law. It's about grace. It's about God's grace. And it's a free gift. Well, it's almost free. Live by grace. Trust in God. That's what Matthew says. He, he, you remember the Sermon on the Mount? Anybody remember that? Blessed are the poor in spirit. There's the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who meek. Bless those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Bless the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers. This is our God. You say thou shalt not kill, I'll tell you what. You want to abide by that law? If you even have anger for one of your brothers, it's as if you killed someone. So don't sit and show me all the things that you say you're good at. God can raise up children of Abraham from the stones. That's the kind of stuff that Matthew tells us. Don't be smug in your self-righteousness. Otherwise, the king might come and destroy you. That's kind of what Matthew is telling us today. We had a big pig roast. It was wonderful, wasn't it? All of you went, was it wonderful? It was great, wasn't it? We, we presented 25 people to the bishop to put their hands on. That's pretty amazing. And three baptisms, that's pretty amazing too. And then we had a couple of bands and the choir was wonderful. Marlene, you were wonderful. It was just glorious, right? And the food was just spectacular. And bouncy things for the kids. Did you get a go on the bouncy things at all, Charles? Well, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, wonderful. That's the kind of enthusiasm we ought to have for Sunday morning. you got to come here. Our choir is wonderful. The preacher is, well, he's mediocre, but look at all these wonderful people here, you know. And you can be a part of it. It's free. And guess what? That pig roast didn't come cheap. It, I'm telling you, they didn't know, those people didn't even know how to add, the people that were doing the pig roast. They say they were doing accounting, but when I saw the bills come in this week, I thought, And every year somebody goes like this when the pig roast comes in. I say, don't worry about it. It builds so much goodwill. It's such a wonderful event. I wish everybody would come to it. Yes, it costs something. Who paid for it? Well, the church paid for it, right? The church paid for it. But let me tell you something. This feast that we talk about in the gospel today, Jesus paid for that. He paid the price. It's paid full. You don't have to have anything other than the right clothes to get admission. It's paid for with Jesus' blood. He paid for it with his own life. That's pretty special, isn't it? Don't you think that's good news? Jesus paid the price for us, free admission. But all we have to do is go in with an attitude of grace. How do we know that? How do we know what to do? What, what, tell us, preacher. Oh, look, I'm running them off. We read the end of the letter of Paul to the Philippians today. And Paul, this is one of the best pieces of literature ever written. One of the best pieces of the epistles of Paul. And he tells them over and over again, I want you to be of the same mind as Christ Jesus, who emptied himself and gave himself for us, who paid the price for the banquet, who said you can be a part of this. And he's in and up today, and he's got these two women or at odds with one another. And he's telling them, I want you to be of the same mind as the Lord, just like he's been telling them. And then he finishes up with this wonderful stuff. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. Again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. You know, we're, we're about to build a building. We celebrated the groundbreaking Sunday out there with all those people. It was glorious, wasn't it? Those of us who were there, it was wonderful. We were taking pictures, everybody was celebrating, yay! And then we got the bids back this week, and they're way high, and I'm thinking, I, I have failed you people, because I haven't convinced you that we need this building. Look, I mean, there are people missing. You know, they're gone. Why are they gone? Because we asked them to be a part of this? We, we're going to need more if we're going to do this. It's looking pretty bleak. Can we build it? Y'all think? What, anybody think we can build this building? Nobody? Oh, okay. Well, let me tell you how you're gonna build, we're going to build this building. With God's help. We're not going to build it because we got uh, superior talent or money. You know, not, That's not what builds it. It's grace. It's grace. It's God's grace. Trust in God. That's what we're called to do. This is stewardship time. We're going to have a message from the stewardship committee today. 
And stewardship is not anything except our relationship with each other and God. How we live our lives out. And we're told what to do. Rejoice always. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Because in Matthew's Gospel, he says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. And if you're lost, God's going to come looking for you. That's our God. Don't worry about anything. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts. And finally, beloved, he says, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You know what he's talking about here? He's talking about celebrating. Rejoice. Rejoice always. Look for the good. Look for those things that give life. And grab hold of them and know that they're yours and they were paid for by the blood of the Lamb. And all you have to do is have gratitude. It's because it's a great gift. This is a gift. All of this. But some don't come, do they? don't they? Some don't come. Some come to church and go like this. Pains me to see that. Because I think I'm okay I'm presenting this stuff you know this gospel stuff this is good news you know that and you can have it we can all have it you know why people don't come to the party sometimes because they can't control it they can't control what happens at the party they can't control who comes right there are some people at the big roast Sunday that some of you may not want to associate with like me We can't control it, this party that God's throwing. You know, it couldn't be that easy, could it? Did we just have to show up with gratitude? That Surely we have to have some secret knowledge, right? Maybe have a guru that we sit at their feet for long enough, and then all of a sudden we learn the secret handshake, and we can come in. Maybe that's what we need, right? Surely. No, not the gospel that I read. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to have any great knowledge. The only knowledge you need is that God has given you a great gift. And say thank you. Thank you. In order to get in, you've got to put on the right clothes. And before you do that, you've got to get stripped naked of all that phony baloney stuff you've been picking up all these years. Well, no, no, I need to be special. Right? Well, you are special. You're very special. You're just as special as the tax collectors and the dirt diggers and all those people out there that maybe you wouldn't associate with. Maybe those people in prison. You're very special. We're all special in the eyes of God. That's the good news. Even the tax collectors are going to get in. And you're all invited to the feast. Come. Be a part of it. Because the gift that God offers us is, any, is greater than anything we can imagine. Anything you can build on earth, God has given us much more than that. And the price has been paid. Your admission ticket is saying thank you. And that's good news.